So the M1 MacBook Air and Pro have gotten great reviews. I feel like a lot of people are liking these things, they're gonna be buying them, and they're gonna be using them for school or work. And I feel like a lot of you probably are gonna be using them on a desk at home. So I created a minimalistic desk setup that I think you guys would appreciate or at least be able to get some ideas for your own. I do have to say this though, 44% of you are watching my videos and not subscribing. What's up with that? You know, it's like you're coming to my house, peeking in the window, watching me get dressed but not coming in. Like just come inside, subscribe, it's free. You're gonna love it here. We have cake, everybody wants to meet you. It's a great family. Now to make this all work, you need a dock because the MacBook Air and Pro, at least the M1s, don't have a lot of ports to use. There's only two. So I partnered with CalDigit because these guys make fantastic docks. I wanna introduce you to the TS3 Plus. This dock has 15 ports. That's more ports than most gaming laptops. In the front alone, you have an SD card slot, two audio jacks, one for your headphones, the other for speakers, USB Type-C, USB-A, all up to five gigabits per second. On the back, you have an RJ45 to hardwire it to your network, DC in to power the dock, display port, which is what I have my monitor connected to, optical, USB 10 gigabits per second for faster transfers, two Thunderbolt ports, one that connects to the Mac, the other one is open for use, and then four other USB-A ports. This supports up to 87 watts. So even if you don't use an M1 MacBook Air Pro, you can use a MacBook Pro 16 and it's gonna charge it at the same time. So you don't have to connect a charger to the actual laptop because the dock will do it for you. Now, if you have an Intel Mac, you can connect two extra monitors to this, but because I'm using an M1, you can only use one monitor. Now the monitor I have here is 4K and even though CalDigit says it can only support up to 60 Hertz, I'm getting 120 Hertz. Now this is too big for you and you want something a bit more portable, let's say if you travel a lot, take a look at their Soho dock. Small office, home office. You don't need a power supply for it, you just use the included Thunderbolt 3 cable, it connects to the side. You get less ports, but you still have tons of them. So just like before you get that SD card slot, but you also have a micro SD card slot, USB-C in the front, up to 10 gigabits per second, and then on the back, you have HDMI, display port, and then another USB Type-C port that can charge another device. Because this desk is kind of small, I wanted to use a small keyboard to go with it, and I opted for the Keychron K2. You've seen this in a ton of tech YouTuber videos, and for a very good reason. It's a solid keyboard. These mechanical switches feel nice to type on. I love the, the dark gray and light gray theming. There's RGB if you want to add a little flavor to your minimalistic setup. And you can hook up to three different devices using Bluetooth. Now, if you don't want to use Bluetooth, you can also use the wired cable that comes included. The best part is they send you the keycaps in case you want to use it with a Windows device instead. It's just a solid device, and I've been using this for over eight months, and I have zero complaints about it. Now, to hold the MacBook, I'm using the 12 South Book Arc. This is just a simple piece of metal that's in the shape of an arc that keeps your MacBook upright. It just makes the desk setup look nicer. Now, you can get different pieces of rubber depending on the MacBook you're using, but they've included a few nice features like being able to slide the cables underneath the hole on the bottom, and it just adds a little bit of cleanliness to your desk instead of leaving the laptop open or flat on the surface. Now I don't use productivity mice because most of them are for right-handed people only. So I use gaming mice. I find them to be the best option for a left-handed person. Plus I also like to game. This is the Logitech G305. I've shown this before. I use products for a long time if they are great. And this is great. It's light, it's easy to carry. There's a space on top to, to carry your dongle. There's a couple of programmable buttons on the left side, sensitivity button if you want to change the DPI, and of course a very solid scroll wheel. The only down part to this mouse is that it uses a AA battery, but here's the thing, I've had this for what, eight, nine months I think, and I haven't had to change the battery once. Now the way I use this with the MacBook is very simple. I don't connect the wireless dongle to the back of the docking station, I actually use a adapter and connect it to the second Thunderbolt port. The reason I do this is when I disconnect the cable from the dock, I won't forget the dongle. 
If I leave the dongle on the back of the dock, I'll most likely forget it. If it's connected to the laptop already, it's already with me when I leave. Also a quick shout out to this mouse pad, the Steel Series Quick Gaming Mouse Pad. It's very cheap. It's a nice cloth material, which makes a great surface for your mouse. And I wanted it to be small because again, to make the desk look cleaner, but also small enough that I can just grab it off the desk and throw it in a bag if I'm leaving the studio. To charge my phone, I'm using the MagSafe charger. I don't really know what to say about this, but it's a charger. It sits on the desk, it magnetically attaches to the back of my phone and wirelessly charges it. I don't think you should go out and buy this, but since I have it, it looks great with this setup. A regular cable will do the same job, or you can just buy a wireless charging stand. Finally, the speakers. And I was gonna put speakers on this desk, or like computer speakers, but I was like, you know what? Let's try the HomePod minis. Let's see how this turns out. And it actually ended up sounding really good. The problem with the MacBook Pro 13, even though it has great speakers, is when it's closed, the sound is muted. The HomePod mini speakers sound great with this setup. There is one thing you should note though. There's two of them on the desk, but only one works when you have it being used as a regular speaker connected to the computer. Only time you can get both speakers to work in a stereo pair is if you start to airplay it from a specific app. So if I'm using Apple Podcasts, for example, I can just airplay it to both speakers. But if I'm watching a movie in a browser, it only uses one HomePod mini depending on which one I choose. So that pretty much wraps up my M1 MacBook Air or Pro desk setup. I hope I gave you guys some ideas to help create your own. If you're interested in any of these products, there'll be links in the description down below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video.